After I defeated Crucibina, the moniker of Mother died with her. I chose to forego the title she called herself and even chose to give up my own name. I rebuilt the House of the Hearth under a new identity. Not only as Arlecchino, but as father. As the original Harbinger, much about him remains a mystery. Upon our first meeting, he recognized my background with ease. Yet to this day, I know little about him. When I was imprisoned, it was the Tsaritsa who pardoned me and gave me the title of Harbinger. I could sense she was a person of true sincerity and compassion, unlike all those pompous hypocrites with their posturing and rhetoric. Yet, it's difficult to say whether her compassion alone is enough to melt the ice and snow that permeates her land. All I can say is this. If we are forced to be at odds one day, I will raise my weapon against her without hesitation. Because that is the greatest level of respect I am able to bestow. He is very powerful, and that power comes with a high level of responsibility. However, I believe him to be someone worthy of respect, independent of the power he holds. When I first took over the House of the Hearth, he proposed a number of plans for us to work together. He wanted me to send any rejects to him. He planned to experiment on them and then share the results with me. I heard that he and the previous knave had quite the professional rapport in that regard. All I can say is that if he weren't one of my fellow Harbingers, I would have expedited their happy little reunion long ago. She is a very special Harbinger. Pose her a question, and the answer you receive will be entirely unpredictable, if she sees fit to give a proper answer at all. Regardless, any answer you do receive is sure to be an interesting one. The rooster holds little love for me, and the feeling is mutual. He is an acceptable mayor, I suppose. Perhaps even an exceptional one. He has an uncanny ability to make great gains at a small price, which has earned him substantial acclaim throughout his political circles. However small the price may be, if it continues to come at the expense of my organization, sooner or later... Hmm. I have little interest in her. She's extremely passionate about her research and does not appear in public often. In fact, many of our officers have yet to see her at all. Compared to, let's say, someone who would go so far as to create segments of themselves to better wander across the land, I suppose you could say she is at the other end of the extreme. I won't deny that he is a capable and imaginative individual, but he lacks clarity. He can formulate grand plans and manipulate the economy with ease, Yet at the same time, he allows his actions to be governed by the vengeance and hatred locked in the depths of his heart. Rational people often believe themselves capable of controlling their emotions, but I believe that confidence is their greatest weakness. She and Piero were the first Harbingers I became acquainted with. Her prideful attitude when she first visited the House of the Hearth failed to earn her many friends among the children. Subsequent visits were accompanied by gifts, and the stately claim that those who dislike me shall receive none. The children quickly learned how to play pretend, and she in turn basked in their attention, superficial though it may have been. I imagine she quite enjoyed being surrounded by children, perhaps due to the persistent loneliness that plagued her. I found her sacrifice to be a great shame. May she be reunited with her lover in death. Objectively speaking, his personality is ill-suited to that of a harbinger. He often tries to think the best of others, and finds himself used by them as a result. Of course, he is very talented. With time, I'm sure he'll come into his own. I see no need to judge him too early. Clairvy once asked me what a real home looks like, but I had no answer for her. How could any of us know the answer when the House of the Hearth is made up entirely of people who never had a place to call home? By killing Crucibina, I was able to assume the identity of Father. 
and rebuild the house under a new set of rules. Still, I'm well aware that even with these efforts, the house is far from that ideal. As for what a real home truly looks like, I suppose that question is best put to the side for now. Perhaps one day, Linny will be able to give me a new answer. Lynette's uniquely calm personality is also her strength, and I believe she is more than clever enough to recognize that. She is an irreplaceable part of that little team of three, and I would imagine that role brings her much joy. As her father, my duty is merely to give her the space to put those talents to good use. Fremenet has a complex mind and often hides his emotions. He blames himself for things that aren't his doing and allows them to eat away at his conscience. I would imagine the other children might find it difficult to understand his manner of thinking. But you seem to share a similar delicate sensibility. Perhaps you two would make good friends. I asked Linny to deliver an assortment of cakes for her theater troupe to enjoy during tea time. The children made the cakes themselves as a gesture to express the support and enthusiasm of her audience. I do hope she enjoys them. Monsieur Nervalet intentionally maintains a certain distance in professional and private settings. Many say this makes him cold and unfeeling. But I believe the truth is just the opposite. In order for all beings to be treated equally under the law, a certain level of emotional distance is expected. Maintaining that kind of indifference is, in itself, a demonstration of kindness. I once had a pet spider named Bambi. Raising spiders is quite fascinating. They cannot be domesticated like cats or dogs. Any affection bestowed upon them will not be returned, and they require little investment in terms of care. It's the kind of relationship that suits me perfectly. The Aurora in Sneshnaya is quite beautiful. Certainly worth a visit.